Guys, guys, I really look at everyone who comes out and really criticizes Eric Ted Hag for his style of play, for everything that he's not doing well and things not going on well for the club of Man United. Yet, every other day that passes by, more and more players of Man United get injured. And guess what? Harry Maguire, Rafael Veran, and Bruno Fernandes are doubtful for the game that we are playing today at the city ground in the midlands welcome to the united matters channel how are you guys and where you're watching us from i go by the names of rock and david smash like button comment and share if at all you're watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily hope you guys are really having fun right and it's really important to note that it's not gonna be an easy week for the club of man united playing nottingham today and playing man city over the weekend is another hard uh, journey that we need to obviously see to it that will really overcome it might be a week of tears or a week of joy because you'll never predict the game of football because i really predict that few of you came out and really thought that we are going to lose to fulham but the way fulham came out and really outplayed us at old trafford really shocked me and you never know these players might rise up to the occasion and say All right let's really gate this team out of the fa cup but Eric Ten Hag is still having a lot of work to do with Anthony, but he has gone ahead to really back him up again. But he has gone ahead to really send what uh, is like a final warning to him that if you don't do a BCD, then you don't expect me to come in for you and really plead. So we thank God for the gift of life. The Muslim is Barak Laufikum. Hope you guys are really having fun, right? Wherever you are. And this is... And this is Rokan David. You can as well call me R.D. as we get into this beautiful, uh, this beautiful day that we'll see United either proceed to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup or be knocked out. Remember, Man City is through, Coventry City is through, Leicester City is through, and Newcastle is through. And today, there is Liverpool playing. Um, there is Brighton playing. Uh, I think um, there is. Uh, I think which other teams are still in. Wolverhampton Wonders, I think, is playing and other teams in there for you. I think even Everton. So, let's go eyes. And let's see what we are told by <coughs> Simon Stone. Eric Ten Hag says Harry Maguire will miss today's game. <coughs> sure about that. Bruno Fernandes and Rafael Veran also doubts. Now, let me start it off with Harry Maguire. By the way, however much Harry Maguire went ahead to score a goal against Fulham, he was the man responsible for us conceding the second one. All he had to do was take that foul and see whether the referee is going to really book you. You get a second bookable face and you find yourself and your team really defending and dying for that one point. That was really unprofessional of him. So, in the dying minutes, we've gone ahead to level up the game. You leave the guy to go like that and he said that he wanted to play to the Manchester derby and guess what looks like if he's out of this game then he won't be able to make it to the game of Manchester City so he's not gonna be playing but even Rafael Veran is a doubt for this game of football and if I told you went ahead to see my match preview I never went ahead to really play Rafael Veran I thought that it's gonna be Harry Maguire and John sorry Harry Maguire and John Evans right now I think this is where Kambwala comes in through. If I'm Eric Ten Hag, I play Kambwala and Linderov. All Kambwala and John Evans. Then I play Linderov onto the right back. And then I play Dalo onto the left back. Because we need balance. We need balance. If not, <coughs> he plays Amrabat as a right back. And then he plays Dalo as a left back. We need balance for that beautiful game of football. And that will obviously take us... Will take us... Uh, miles in there for you. So, if I'm Eric Ten Hag, if Rafael Veran is out for this game of football and is a doubt, I shouldn't force him. I rest him, and we just have to pray to it that Rafael Veran makes it a point to play in the Man City derby because of his experience and what he keeps up to the occasion. He has been really fit for the previous almost three months, and Rafael Veran has gone ahead to take to take it to his own understanding and is going to hit to win very many games for the club of Man United. That is Rafael Veran for you. So I understand everything that people will be talking about, but Rafael Veran to me, 
I'm not going to miss him in the game of Nottingham Forest. I would have gone ahead to rest him. By the way, if it's possible, even Casemiro, I cannot play him all those minutes. All I have to do is play Casemiro the last 30 minutes. That is it. Let Amrabat, um, Kobe Menu start into that beautiful game of football and do the netfall. You know, Casemiro should come in through to play like 30 minutes, you know, because we should reserve him for that game because it's going to need a lot of um, intensity and the workload is going to be really huge for the club of Man United. So that is uh, Rafael Veran for you. But the other point I really want to talk about at, like, at length is Bruno Fernandes. Now, this is all I wanted to see. And Man United fans who love Bruno Fernandes, you're going to forgive me. Bruno Fernandes is one of the reasons as to why we're not performing very well at the club of Man United. Because he doesn't do the job of a number 10. He doesn't give us the control of the game. You know, we've all again to, we've gone ahead to say it that Kobe Mainu and Casemiro have gone ahead to really do their job very well. They've shielded the back four. But every time they looked outnumbered in the central midfield because Bruno Fernandes keeps, keeps running onto the left, onto the right. His positional discipline and sense is not right. I see no reason as to why a central attacking midfielder should be really tracking back through the wings. Who tells you that? Because the most, the most protective part of the pitch is the central midfield. That's why they even came up with the saying that games of football are won and lost in the midfield. That is it. So, Bruno has to track through the central axis to come and join uh, Casemiro and Kobe Menu. And all along, I wish my prayer is put to action. I've always come up and really said that we should really drop this guy. I've come out and said it, and I pray it really happens. I've always come out and told you that a day should come for Bruno Fernandes to be dropped. We should be dropping Bruno Fernandes and play Ericsson as a number 10. And I just can't wait to see how Ten Hag is going to really deal with this. We have one of the best number 10s in the world. That is Ericsson. You know how he did it at Ajax. How he did it at um, Tottenham Hotspur. Inter Milan. So, why don't we really go ahead and really do that by playing him into that central attack midfield position? And today I would love to see Amrabat Kobe Menu in the double pivot and Ericsson playing ahead of them. That is it. I want to see Ericsson played as a number 10 in this game. I don't want to see Eric Ten Hag figuring out to really bring in Scott McTominay to play as a number 10 because he's fond of doing that. Yet Ericsson is the best number 10 that this club really has. Ericsson does it better than Bruno Fernandes. And I don't know why Ten Hag is really uh, static. You know, he needs to obviously start making some decisions right. You know, like that decision of Ericsson. We need Ericsson in that team to play as a central attacking midfielder. That's what we need. So we wait and see how Ten Hag is going to deal with the situation. But for me, I wouldn't even like to see Bruno play into the Man City derby. No way. No way. He costs us. All we need is a player to come in through and do what the number 10 does. You know, that's what we need. People look at moments like he went ahead and really shot at goal and the goalkeeper fisted the boy in the vicinity of Harry Maguire and Harry Maguire went ahead to really get a tap in. Ask yourself, is that what Bruno is meant to do? Bruno is meant to give us control and release these players. How many times did he get the ball and really shoot it? I was watching Kevin De Bruyne yesterday. I think he made an assist for the second goal of Haaland. Was it the second or third goal of Haaland that scored against Luton Town? In the game of Fulham in the first half, he gets that ball like how Kevin De Bruyne went ahead to really get it. And he went ahead to shoot at goal, yet United had players in the box that had really gone ahead to position themselves better. I think it was the game of Luton Town, right? Yeah, Luton Town. Then... Kevin De Bruyne gets the ball in the same situation. He doesn't shoot at goal. 
he does a cutback to Erling Haaland and Haaland really goes ahead to shoot. That's the difference I'm telling you that we are missing out on our proper builder because Bruno wants to shoot and goes in for Hollywood passes. He goes in for uncalled for efforts. The end product of Bruno's game is really sickening our attack. You know, why does team like why why do teams like Arsenal keep scoring goals even when Gabriel Jesus is out? Because their people because of Odegaard. That is it. Odegaard is the difference between us not scoring goals and us not scoring goals because he'll obviously give us the control that we deserve in the midfield. And after giving us control that we deserve in the midfield, he continues to really create and is not selfish. He only shoots when he feels like, all right, I've gone ahead to do enough. I've given them the balls. They've not, they've not gone ahead to score. Let me try to shoot at goal. That is it. So I don't really understand why people are so much, you know, defending this guy Bruno Fernandes. He's been performing badly and I think this injury has been a blessing in disguise and let's wait and see whether he's gonna make it there. But we should try out something without Bruno Fernandes. That is it. So let's wait and see how that pans out. But more three players are really out. That means the injury list has gonna hate to really broaden when you take out Bruno, Veran and um, Maguire, Luke Shaw, Lisandro Martinez, Rasmus Hoyland, Mason Mount, Tarel Malasia, uh, Anton Martial, Rasmus Hoyland. We are having 10 injured players at the club of Man United. And injuries are really killing us off. Because you saw to it that when we had Lisandro Martinez, Luke Shaw, and Casemiro, we really played very well. Even when we had Casemiro, Luke Shaw, and Lisandro Martinez was out, we kept on winning games. So that is exactly what you need to do when you're really when you're really having those players. And when you're not having them, the, the reverse is also true because that sends you to really conceding goals after goals. That is it coming in through from the sick bay of Man United. And you guys should get to know that our team is really having problems. Then Eric Ten Hag on Anthony. He has told us that we will support him. I know what he's capable of. I have seen it. I have seen for Ajax in 88 games. He scored 22 goals, 22 assists, and was performing in the Champions League. He was unstoppable. Now, I know in the public, I, the manager, always come and tell us, I'll support the player, I'll really keep him going. But, out of all what he said, it's Ajax, you know? And the demands of Man United and Ajax are totally different. I think Anton is going to have to make it hard for himself at Man United. You know, all what you have to do when you're playing for Man United, do the easy job. Do the easy job. You know, like what the Ahmads do. You know, do the easy job. Get that ball, pass it and move. Pass it and move. Invert, you know, and don't always go in for this for those selfish efforts you know try to feed these people until when people will say anton has gone ahead to do his job he has released all the number nines of united has released so and so and he has found himself in a situation of really not uh being able but looks like he's down on pace he cannot take off players he's really having a very bad spell at man united and by the way if Anthony had gone ahead to maintain his performance in his first season at the club of Man United, I think, would have gone ahead to say, all right, he's gone ahead to, he has gone ahead to improve. But you've seen everyone pointing at him that even Sir Jim Ratcliffe is really looking to really offload him and he doesn't even care the amount of money that Man United is spent when they're really buying him. It shows you how bad he has gone ahead to look that even the new people that are going ahead to run the club of Man United, as far as the football operations are concerned, have gone ahead to choose him out as the player to sell because for them they're gonna have to realize that Olise can do a better job than him and I think if at all you get in Olise you get into central defenders you get in a midfielder and a center forward at Man United we go straight into the title contention that is it if we get in players with the mentality of Rasmus Hoyle and Lisandro Martinez such players you really understand that we can really go steps and go um, and go lots and lots and lots and lots of distances than we've gone ahead to be moving recently. So, Ten Hag, lastly, 
He also said that the players need some time, but they also have to know in top football you don't get time. You have to perform when you come in, you have to show it. But as a manager, I know they need the time. That is the paradox. I will give them the time. I believe in these players. Ten Hag has a good team when the spine of the team is available. And right now, even Rasmus Hoyland is going to hit to become the spine of the team. Lisandro Martinez, Rafael Veran, Luke Shaw, um, Casimiro, Kobe Mainu, and Rasmus Hoyland. I think those six players have proven to be the spine of the team because when they are available, United plays the best football ever. When they are away, United doesn't play the best football ever. But, however much those players have been available, they are players that have not got a hate to obviously click when such has gone ahead to be put in place as the spine of the team. And one of those is Anthony that we previously talked about, that he is improving but not at the rate at which he should be. You know, look at Marcus Rashford. Even when these players are available, Marcus Rashford is not really improving and doing the best that's supposed to be doing as a player. He's really banger average and he's really looking bad. So, Ten Hag is going to hate to trust his players, but I know this is what he says in the media to back them up. But during the training session, this guy is a tough guy and those players know it down their brains that this guy is not happy with how they're really performing. So guys, thank you very much for watching the training thoughts about Maguire, Veran, Bruno, Injured. What do you make about that? That is a triple injury blow for the club of Man United. And do you think at any time that Antonio will come out and really live up to the expectations of Eric Ten Hag? And go into the comment section, tell me your thoughts about that, and don't forget to subscribe. We cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and may the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David is my name, the Muslims. Barak Lauthikum, we out.